Okay, hello everybody. We have part two of Matt's uh, talk. This time he's talking about the Raspberry Pi, but he's going to preface it with a few words. Yeah, I, w I wanted to show you the website first before I uh, plug it in. Um, oh, the volume. Okay, uh, this this distribution for the Raspberry Pi is uh, the called the Retro Retro Pi. Retro Pride Project, and basically it's a, a collection of uh, emulators uh, for the Raspberry Pi, and they support uh, both versions of the Raspberry Pi because there's two versions of it. There's the original single core version of the Raspberry Pi, and there's a new four core version of the Raspberry Pi, which I recommend that one much more. If you if you don't, price. yeah, for the same price. So get the get the four core one. It's much better. Can you show up, uh, show the your Raspberry Pi? Again yes. That you have? Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, it's the same form factor as the other one, okay. uh, approximately. Yeah. Um, there's uh, uh, HDMI supported, but there's also a composite port. But it's this weird. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that real quick. Uh, it's a weird one of those multi-camera ports, which looks like a headset port. Um, the only issue with it is, is that Apparently there's several types, and I had to find the right one. So apparently the right one is the Zune adapter for the Zune uh, player. <laughs> Ironically, yeah, wow. it's the same. Apparently the same configuration. So I just bought this. I haven't tried it yet, but apparently this is the correct one because I bought one off of uh, Amazon and I plugged it in and it was all wrong. I got buzzing on the on the audio and I'm like, no, it's the video signal. I can hear the. 60 hertz video signal. Like this isn't right. And I went and looked it up. Went like, oh, it's real specific. So, so if you need uh, to to look at it in the AV mode, make sure you get the uh, Zoom cable or one compatible with the the Zoom player. It's worth mentioning, it'll save you some time and money. <laughs> so, okay. So back to the uh, Retro Pi project. This is um, a distribution that has a bunch of emulators on it. Um, scroll down. There's a list on here. So these are the supported emulators right now. Um, they have the Mii emulator that's on there. Uh, the Apple II, Atari 800. I can go through the whole list. Um, the Vice is on here for the C64, which I have that I have that loaded and configured. Um, also a bunch of the game consoles. Uh, there's even a PC emulator x86, so you can run some of the earlier like 286 games uh, on here. Um, does do uh, they have the N64 one on here, which is a little more advanced. Uh, yeah, I haven't fully configured mine, but yeah, so it was, I've been hearing that that one actually runs because I guess on the old Raspberry Pi it's not not, not as much. Four frames a second. Yeah, it's like still, yeah, it wasn't performing too well. Um, one of the things about when you set this up is you, you have to go in and download the image. And it's basically the image of the SD card uh, with the Linux file system and it's all pre-set up. You have to get a program called, uh, was it Win Imager 32? Yeah, Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, and that will take the image file and write it to the SD card. Um, so it's kind of like the same way you would back up a hard drive uh, on your PC, except it's for the uh, SD card. Um, so it's a pre-set up image, image that's ready to go with all the emulators installed and ready, and ready to rock. Um, one of the things about um, to get the ROMs onto the card, you need to uh, pl uh, plug it into the network and from your PC you'll see an SMB share. Uh, to the Raspberry Pi, and it has all the folders in there for, to dump all the ROMs for each individual emulator. Um, some of the emulators, like the Amiga one, require a Kickstart ROM, so there's a, uh, a folder and a place for that as well. Um, on the menu, you'll see that um, a lot of the emulators won't show up because there's so many of them. Uh, they limit it, so if there's no um, nothing in the folder, they, the it doesn't show up on the menu. So 
you'll see the list of emulators on here, and then when you first set it up, you'll notice uh, there's only a few on there. And you wonder, well, where is the uh, emulator that says it has Vice and all these other ones? You have to dump a ROM over there and some data into that folder for it to show up on the menu. Yeah, looking through Yeah, that way, yeah. Because otherwise, yeah, you're looking through a bunch of stuff that uh, uh, you may not use or, or want to use or don't want to look at and have to scroll through each time because it's a big list. Um, the other thing you have to do when you first set it up is you have to um, go in to, uh, there's a f instructions on how to do this, but you have to go into the menu and uh, tell it to expand the card to fill up the card. Uh, space because otherwise it's it's a, it's an image file I think for an eight gig card, but you may put in a thirty two gig card, but it's only going to be using uh, eight gigs of space, so you have to tell it to expand so it takes up the whole thirty two uh, gig cards. So you can when you dump all the ROMs over, you'll have all that extra space. So from there, I'm going to plug in the uh, Raspberry Pi and go right to the distribution. You can take a look at it. Give me a second. Projector should switch over automatically. I didn't have to. A minute ago, I didn't have to touch anything. Mm. I just killed the laptop and plug in that. Okay, so now it's moving up. Mm. And of course, the uh, new Raspberry Pi boots up a lot quicker than the older one. So if you're using the uh, other distribution on the older Raspberry Pi. This takes a little longer to do that. <laughs> this one's much noticeably quicker. So it brings up the menu. Uh -huh. I have some of the stuff pre-loaded, uh, so there's more stuff that's going to show up on the menu. Um, I haven't fully configured the Amiga one. I haven't had uh, enough time <laughs> to get that all set up. It's not easy. Yeah. So there's a few of them. Oh, cool. Commodore nice. 64. Uh -huh. Of course, I dumped over some uh, Game Boy and Sega Master System. Yeah. That's kind of a quick and instant yeah. <laughs> to test it out. The distribution can be stuck oh, over a ROM. The Nintendo and then the oh, yeah. And then, of course, it's got Scum VM, which is great. So if you have any of those uh, Lucasfilm games, uh, like Secret of Monkey Island or any of those, you can put those on there and actually be able to run it because it's the engine that's been ported. So all you need to do is grab the graphic files yeah. and stuff off the CD. <laughs> yeah, it's not even emulation because it's a uh, because that whole uh, yeah uh, Lucasfilm LucasArts uh, games were basically all run on an engine that they could port to other platforms, mm. so they could easily port all their games to other machines. So someone wrote uh, this uh, runtime so that you can run those same files. So it'll run at full speed and everything because it's compiled for this particular machine. So it's running native. So I'll go back over to the Commodore 64, so we'll launch that. Uh, yeah, I dumped some over <laughs> already. Don't have too much space. Just holding things up. Uh, so you'll get a menu of all the uh, E64 images that I dumped over over the network. Wait a minute. Is, that, is that the correct font for Commodore? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not the expert on it. You were here yesterday. You know what that refers to. Yes, yes. Uh, I remember the discussion you know, about the, the one on the wall. So. Dragon has a lot of a lot of listings there. Yeah. Well, it's really because I tested Dig Dug earlier. <laughs> I'm not sure if all these will load. I can I can try it though if you want to see one of these other ones. I don't know. Um, Do you have Star Trek? <laughs> That's all I'm uh, not sure. Let me bring up Dig Dug real quick, and then I'll go back and try one of the other ones. I just want to show you one that that works. So when you select a disk image, it'll automatically type this in for you. And if I had sound plugged in, you'd hear the sound. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't, what I I didn't plug it in. That. That's what it's I okay. should, should have done during the break. I should have brought yeah. these speakers. Yeah, I, I brought some, but they're still in the car. It's oh. still, <laughs> it'd take too long for me to run out to the car and then get them. So.
And of course, um, there's a flag or a configuration to enable the composite port if you want to run this through the composite out. Um, okay. and basically, just you know, the composite out just takes the um, the internal buffer, the 1080, 1920 by 1080, and just downscales it to NTSC. So it spits it out. So there's it, no resolution to it. Has, yeah, so it has an HDMI port and a composite port out. Yes, it's okay. got it's got both. Okay, so that's all it has. But uh, some of the distributions, I think you can disable the composite port because I think it uses less power. Oh, huh. So oh. so sometimes you have to go into the configuration and flag it to be on. Okay. And then it'll output. And it didn't load the game. I thought it would load. <laughs> oh, is it up there? Oh yeah, it started to load. Yeah, I had it. I had it running earlier over there in the corner. Make sure I tested it out so this wouldn't happen. <laughs> and then it happened. <laughs> so I could load one of these. You want to try to load one of these? Anyone want to play Dragon Wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> try that. <laughs> See if that one runs. Okay. So what are these? These are D64s that you're running, yeah, or what? That are they? didn't work. Uh, these are D64 yeah. images. Okay, D64s. And and it could take D64s and PRGs. Um, I haven't tried PRGs, but I th you might be able to take the PRGs. I haven't. I think it's just Vice. It's just yeah. A version. It's a Linux version of Vice. So yeah. Oh. So everything that Vice supports. Okay. Should be supported. Three. I'll see if that loads. <laughs> so I think one of these, I got the titles from the other one's not running. The archive. Oh, what happened? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that one's running because it was, it was doing that over there and it's like decrunching. Yeah, that's decrunching the archive. So, that one's okay. Because I, I loaded it over there earlier, one of them it just did this forever. Uh, did it stop doing that? It didn't stop. It just oh, stayed no. right there, and I wasn't Continue sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure because I thought it was decompressing, but uh, so I kept doing it, and then it goes back and it keeps doing it. Uh, oh. it is not. Oh, oh there no, there it is. It, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. it does work. I just didn't really want to. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just in impatient. Okay, everybody, put in some Gauntlet Three music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm still configuring the controller because right now the controller is controlling the menu. But uh, apparently I couldn't get it to work. I was playing with it last night trying to get it to uh, yeah, work for a game map input. It, not only have to map it for the menu system, you have to map it for each system too. Yeah, so I have to go in and yeah, 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 yeah configure, configure it for each one. Yeah. That's what takes the most, that's the most time. You got it. <laughs> the new image of your image. Exactly. Yeah, yeah once it's configured. Yeah. Instead of the rest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I haven't, I haven't configured it yet. <laughs> so I can just show you the title screen for now. Do you have any, uh, like, well, you said, if there were games, do you have, like, any demos on, on your machine right now? Or? Oh, like self-running demos? Take a look. I'm not sure. I just dumped a whole bunch of stuff over. Okay. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. You really, uh... I think I think they're all games. Oh, they're all Fortunately, games. I don't think I have any demos on here. Mm -hmm. Jump out and see if that works. That came up yesterday. Someone was someone asked if uh, Jump Man works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Rogue. Now, what is the speed of this Raspberry Pi? Uh, what's it going in? Uh, I'd have Nine, to check. I think it's 900 megahertz. Yeah. yeah it's but, just shy of a gigahertz. Yeah, okay. but I think you can over, there's an overclock yeah, setting. Yeah, overclock. It, too. It's running with four cores and it runs this stuff pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the C64 stuff is easy to emulate, so. But the, the bigger stuff. Uh, when, when it comes across Amiga stuff, does it slow down? Or? I haven't pushed the Amiga stuff. I'm still configuring it. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I, I ran out of time up easy. leading up to doing the demo. I was hoping okay. to have more. More time to get that set up, so I only got halfway through 
setting it up. That's why the controller is not set up. Uh huh. Uh, and the N64 stuff runs pretty damn well. I think yeah. It's Wow. How about the PlayStation 1 stuff? I have not set that up yet. But I think you had set, did you set up your PlayStation? Yeah. On, on that one? Because I haven't yeah. done that yet. Is it, did it work pretty good? Can I work? Yeah, you can do PCSX 2 pretty well. Really? Okay. Yeah, I haven't pushed it as far as I'd like. Okay. I guess you have. Push it. That's great. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. Push it. I have some of those too. Oh, still loaded? Uh, yeah, darn you, Jumpman! Keep it! Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, use the adapter, yeah. I've got a, I went and bought a uh, N64, uh, I have it in my bag over there, uh, replica. Oh, there it goes. But uh, the original is much better. The replica controllers are hit or miss on the quality. <laughs> yeah, the stick is yeah, especially. Of course, the middle and all the original were out there. Yay, there he is. Best thing to do is a stick. Yeah. So if I had the sound hooked up, you'd be hearing the sounds of the, <laughs> sounds, <laughs> of the game. Yeah. Sounds of the jumpman. Of the jumpman, yeah. Because <laughs> the sound is coming out of the HDMI, but there's no um, speaker on the oh, okay. projector, so. And I might have to enable the. Uh, Composite out to get the uh, RCA, mm. so, you know, audio to work. So this also has all the menus of Vice, so you can come in here and change the speed settings if you want and the refresh rate. And okay. Insert tapes, you know, it's the usual stuff. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you played with uh, Vice, it's pretty much the same. It's all the same menus, it's the same features. Is there any, uh, anything else anybody wants to see on... Uh, I can show some of the game consoles if you're curious about that. What do you mean the game consoles? Well, like, you know, Super Nintendo or anything. Oh, you, you mean wanna, on the Red If you want to see it running, just to see it. Okay, no, sure. But, sure. Even though we, uh, most of the stuff is C64 and Amiga stuff is the uh -huh. cooler stuff. <laughs> of course. I can show you the menu at least to the Amiga. I haven't got it. So when it pops up Amiga, it comes up as a A500 or? I'll, come, I'll, show, I'll show you the I can show you the menu at least. Okay. Um, I don't have it fully configured yet, so so I can't boot into it. But it's uh, basically it's a port of uh, a UAE for all. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I think there's one more emulator on there, another Amiga emulator on there that was listed, but. Uh, I wasn't sure. Shows. Yeah, it was listed on there, but I haven't I haven't tried that yet. Um, um, I just if I remember correctly, I think they use the same storage space for images. So, well, not not because I use I would see photos on your emulator. Yeah, because it just came up with the one, but it's listed on the website. There's like two listed. Yeah. But I wasn't sure how to activate the other Amiga emulator, but it says there's two on. Here. 500 A1200 presets? Yeah, there's presets on here. So this thing can do AGA? Yeah, it's supposed Ooh. to do AGA, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you know, the MIS can output 24 bit you know, uh, video, so uh -huh. you can do the AGA and all that. So. Uh, usual stuff hard drive, uh, change the CPU speed. CPU speed. Yeah, memory. Oh, uh, chip. Give it lots of chip, give it lots of chip. Give it lots of chip, give it lots of slow, slow and fast. Give it as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a balance. I turn this one up, this one turns off. <laughs> oh. I give it eight megs of chip, but it turns off the fast drive. Oh yeah, this is the... What is that? Pan, pan I'm not sure, but I think I just crashed it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that was. Pan, is it Pandora? I either changed it or I crashed it. I don't know. It did something. I may have changed something. Oh no, don't save. Just use it. Okay. Don't save it. Don't save the configuration. You go back in there. There it is. Uh, 
So 20, yeah, so they'll do at least a 1,200. Uh, Kickstarter 3.1? Yeah. So if I you was, ran... I was starting to get it set up because I did have the... If you ran this through SysInfo, would it be a average or a fast Amiga? I don't know because I haven't got it booted yet. Oh, okay. Um, if I did, that would be the first one of the first programs I'd run okay. just to see what it what it says. Okay. Let's see what else is in here. What is it supports the PAL. Sound accurate, fast. Sound accurate. Forty-four kilohertz yeah. sound rate. Yeah, it's something to check too because of the way the Amiga handles sound. It outputs sound during the uh, blanking intervals. Oh, okay. So the sound's always been kind of tricky, you know, especially in emulation because as soon as the scan line retracts, it clears for the audio to go through. And so it sends the audio data while the beam's retracting for the next scan line. Hmm. Then switches back to video. No, it's a little more difficult in emulation. That was one of the issues with UAE and some of the other ones. You'd get like uh, crackly and stuttery sound because you had to get the timing exactly right because it's all timed around uh, NTSC. It's very efficient and uh, quick. I can try it. Maybe I got part of it. Set up. Oh, there is something there. Uh, what is that? I got a little further yeah. than I remember. Ah, look, it's a very squashed screen. Yeah. Probably have to configure that. In the okay, here. more configuration to be done. Yeah, there's usually a lot of configuration to get it set up right. So two, to about two gear, two megs of graphic in the graphic chip, the chip RAM, I should say. Let's see if this makes a difference. No. It's, a, <laughs> oh. it's liquors, though. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's doing, it's doing AGA, so. Yeah, not too bad. Some speed for AGA. Could be the 3.1 round, yeah. Oh. So a little more configuration and stuff. Oh, is it on there? I don't know, let me see. Do I have it on there? I don't think I do. I guess I didn't quite make it that far. <laughs> <laughs> I just made it as far as the workbench uh, installation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in fact, I think that what I did was I set up a hard file. Yeah. Or on on UAE beforehand, um, which I which should work fine. Yeah, you should be able to move over a hard file created on the PC version of Win UAE and just copy it over and just configure it to say use that as a hard drive. And then it'll boot up with all your pre-installed software. So it's a little little quicker than setting it up on the Raspberry Pi directly. Sure. Exit out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't remember. How do you exit out of? Because uh, it doesn't. F12 uh -oh. doesn't bring up. That. Uh -oh. So I'm not sure what to push. So exit out or just reset it. Like I said, I was still experimenting with it. I was still setting it up before the breaking line. I'm not sure what it's doing. Oh. Oh. Uh, I must have reset the whole thing. <laughs> so, is there any uh, any questions on? Uh, so, a setup like this, how much would it cost? Um, well, the board is. Uh, well, they always say the board's thirty-five dollars. Uh huh. Right. But of course, then you got to buy a case. How much was that? And then you got to buy all that stuff. So, what I did is I bought this. Uh, was it? Uh, Canna kit, I guess. Canna kit. This thing. Uh, kinda, never heard of. Okay, Canna kit. Yeah. K 
Mechanicate.com? So yeah, okay. I just bought this off of uh, Amazon. Okay. So it comes with the case and the uh, the board and um, uh, the Wi-Fi adapter. Oh. So you get Wi-Fi on there. Huh. Um, and of course the power cable. Uh-huh. There's the power cable for it. And from Amazon, so, how much did that cost? Uh, 65 if I remember correctly. Okay. So. But that's, that's approximately what it would cost if you bought all the pieces uh, individually because you do have to buy a power supply and you got to buy the key, you know buy the case and then the Wi-Fi and then, yeah and the SD card yeah. yeah it came with an SD card too that was set up so um, the other thing too to mention is the um, the newer version uses a micro SD card as opposed to the older version it used a full size and it's also recommended to use I think it's a class 10 um, card. So huh. it also has. Uh, if you're not doing retro pride, there's also some other distributions. There's uh, the um, uh, what do they call it? The newbies installation, which you just format it as a FAT32 card and just dump the uh, files over, and it'll boot. It'll boot up there and give you a selection, a menu of which operating system you want to install. Hmm. And there's a listing on there. I have to remember all the. Different ones you can load on there, but yeah, it's got Raspbian, and Arch Linux, and a couple of them. yeah, yeah. And there's a yeah, um, and you can select which one you want to install.